I'm Nathan Gonzalez with Inside Elections. There are 18 months before the midterm elections, and that can be an eternity in politics. It's also a very long time in reality. Just for some perspective, between now and Election Day 2018, we'll name two Stanley Cup champions, two NBA champions, two World Series champions, and we'll crown the Seahawks the Super Bowl winners one more time. Republicans are finding some solace in the distance between now and Election Day, thinking that there's enough time for things to change. But we can't ignore that at this stage in the cycle, history and reality are merging together and setting up Democrats to have a great midterm election in the House. The President's party has lost House seats in 18 of the last 20 midterm elections. And in those 18 elections, the President's party has lost an average of 33 seats. Democrats need to gain 24 seats in order to gain the majority in the next Congress. Fast forward to today, Democrats have many of the advantages. President Donald Trump's job approval rating, according to the Real Clear Politics average, is a 40% approve, 55% disapprove. And that's not good for Republican candidates because midterm elections are often a referendum on the president's job performance. Democrats are also enjoying an enthusiasm bump. Ever since President Trump took the oath of office, Democrats by the thousands and by the millions have taken to the streets, marching, showing up at town hall protests. Democratic candidates have been overperforming in special elections, and even a 30-year-old former Capitol Hill staffer has raised over $20 million for a special election in Georgia. At this point, we've changed our ratings in 19 House districts, all in favor of the Democrats. Not only is the battleground expanding, but is also shifting onto more Republican territory. For example, we've dropped Illinois' 10th district, which has gone back and forth between the two parties for multiple cycles, where Democrat Brad Schneider is running for re-election, and we've added nine new Republican seats onto the list of competitive races. When you take a step back and look at the entire House playing field right now, we have 39 seats that are held by Republicans compared to only 14 seats that are currently held by Democrats. And once again, Democrats need to gain 24 to get back to the majority. There is a long time between now and November of 2018. And if the dynamic of the election cycle changes, of course we'll change more of our ratings. But right now, history and reality are merging together for Democrats to make major gains in the House.